How much protein do we need on a carnivore diet? Let's get into it. Hey, what's shake and bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. So if you want to do me a favor, it doesn't cost you anything. You can just hit the like button for this video, assuming you'd like it, of course. I really appreciate it if you do. Anyway, I want to get into the topic of today. How much protein do you need when you're doing a carnivore diet? Most people, when they're doing a carnivore diet, often start off getting a lot of protein because they want to keep themselves full or satiated on a carnivore diet. So one of the ways to easily stick to a carnivore diet in the beginning is making sure you eat enough. Intermittent fasting can really mess around with you on a carnivore diet when you're just starting it because you're breaking up with sugar and carbs. But the thing is, you want to eat a lot in the beginning just to stay satisfied and it's going to help avoid temptation. Now, if you're getting a lot of protein and you're losing weight and everything's going really well, then it's really good. But you want to always find your sweet spot with protein. Now, how do you find your sweet spot with protein? Well, there's a lot of things to take into consideration with that. As we get older, or say in our 40s and 50s and 60s, our body doesn't use the protein as well we're not absorbing it all and we're not absorbing it as well. So you might think, okay, well, increase your protein intake. Well, that's a good thing to do if you're an active person. If you have been doing carnivore and you've lost all the weight you want and you've been doing pretty good and you're thinking, you know what, I wanna just try and put on some lean mass and muscle. Without changing your diet, some weight bearing or weight resistance exercises, you can even do just your own body weight for these exercises, is a good way to help do something about that. But if you notice you're putting a lot of effort in and you're not quite getting the results you think you need, keep in mind this is often a slow process. Unless you're young, then it's easy. But it's often a slow process and you kind of get to the point where you're thinking, wait a minute, I'm doing all this work. How come I'm not getting the results? I'm on a moderately high protein diet. I'm getting like two pounds of meat a day. Why is it that I'm not putting on all this lean mass and muscle? The one thing you wanna take into account is age. The second thing you wanna take into account is are you active enough? And now if you feel you're active enough, and I'm not talking about going for walks or doing certain types of uh, long distance cardio of any kind, like rowing or skiing or anything like that, because those don't put on muscle, they take away muscle. I'm talking about being active with lifting things and pushing things. You may have to stop and calculate how much protein you're getting just to give yourself an idea. I'm not one for counting. It's the beauty of a carnivore diet is you don't need to count when you're doing a carnivore diet. But when you wanna fine tune your diet, it doesn't matter what you're eating, what kind of diet you're doing. You have to start at one point, if you wanna up your game, you have to stop and look at your fuel source. How much fat are you getting? How many carbs are you getting? And how much protein are you getting? Now, if you're doing a strict carnivore diet like I am, your carbs are only trace amounts of carbs that you find in food. You're gonna have to stop and figure out how much protein you're getting in a day. And a lot of that depends on what kind of meat. So if you're having ground beef, as an example, it's probably the easiest way to find the most consistent numbers. If you're having different cuts of steak every day, then it's gonna be a little more difficult to figure out what your protein intake is. You'll have to figure it out every day, depending on the cuts of meat you're eating. Different cuts often have different protein to fat ratios. And if you see you're getting just say 150 grams of protein in a day and you want to put on maybe another 10 pounds of lean mass, you also want to make sure you're getting accurate testing done to find out what your lean mass is. So before you start this process, you might want to go for a DEXA scan or a BOD pod. So I wouldn't recommend going from say one gram of protein per lean pound of weight up to one and a half grams of protein per lean pound of weight. I would do it in small increments. I would go up to maybe 1.1 or 1.2. After a month or two, if you think you're seeing a difference on the scale or in the mirror, then go from there, add a little bit more. If you take too much, your body might not adjust to it too well all at once. And you might put on a little bit of fat while you're doing this. And most people don't wanna do that. They wanna try and stick to lean mass. So most people wanna keep as lean as possible while they put on lean mass. So if you're still trying to lose weight, you may have to bring your protein down a little bit. That brings us to our next problem. If you're at a weight plateau, and you're thinking, okay, my numbers seem right on. I'm getting the proper amount of protein, one gram of protein per lean pound of body weight, and I'm not losing any weight. I've been at a plateau for a while, like I've been. Well, you might wanna stop and figure out if maybe you're getting too much protein, because that might be too much protein for you. Your metabolic health might be damaged enough that that might be a little bit too much protein, and you might need to back down on that. Now, I experimented with this last fall, and I just finished an experiment in the last couple months, and I found doing a moderate to low protein diet was what I needed to do to lose weight. 
but it still comes down to tweaking my protein. I'm at a point where I've been doing lots of walking and weight training, and I'm still having some difficulty losing weight. My fasting insulin is still high. All I can do is keep trying to hack at my body to try and bring my fasting insulin low. It started working after two months of a high fat diet, but I plateaued again because I went off of it to try something different right near the end when it started to work. The one thing you have to keep in mind is you have to give your body a reason to absorb the protein. When we get older and we're not absorbing protein as well, both in quality as well as quantity, we have to start conditioning our body to absorb the protein we're eating. Otherwise, it's just not going to any use and it's gonna get flushed out or stored as fat. We don't want either of those things. So if you're not doing weight bearing exercises of any kind, you're just gonna be spending a lot of money on fuel, your protein, that you're just not gonna absorb. You're literally wasting that money. Unless you're trying to refuel your body for some reason because you have a history of starving yourself, that's typically not a good way to go. So we wanna make sure we find this sweet spot. Well, how can we find that? If you're already in a very healthy spot, you can start adding some protein in increments. But if you're not in a good spot like where I am, you have to start lowering your protein in increments. And I don't think that's a good long-term strategy. But once you gain the goal of where you wanna be and you seem to have good metabolic health, at that point, you can start slowly increasing your protein so that your body doesn't get too shocked by it. And you also, like I said, wanna give your reason to absorb that protein. Protein is the best as a building block. It can be used as a fuel, but it's not ideal. You have to keep in mind, it's all about finding your sweet spot. And don't listen to what someone else is saying you have to do because it works for them. You have to find out what works for you. Everybody is different. Some people might have more experience with this. And some people might have had a lot of success. That doesn't mean it's good for you. You have a completely different health history and metabolism than that person. I had a guy leave a comment in one of my videos the other day and I really like communicating with this guy. And in his question, I responded with, I have a history of teaching my body, training my body to use carbs and sugar as fuel. I've conditioned my body like a well-oiled machine. Little did I realize I was doing that at the time, but I spent decades fueling my body with an overconsumption of carbs and sugar. And now I'm trying to change it to use fat as fuel. Now it was doing okay for a while there, but it's sort of having some hiccups in the system and I need some fine tuning to figure this out. But I'm having difficulty becoming fat adapted. You have to look at it like this. You have to look at it like this when it comes to your metabolism and your health history. If you've been training as a long distance runner for 30 years and you're used to doing half marathons or full marathons on a regular basis, that's what you've conditioned your body to do for all those years, you will suck as a sprinter. That's gonna take a lot of work after 30 years of conditioning your body and your muscles and your ligaments and your joints and your respiratory system and your cardiovascular system, all the systems of your body, your hormones, to get you through those long distance races and then you switch it to sprinting, you're gonna suck as a sprinter. Even though you have that whole history, the last 30 years as a runner, it's not the kind of conditioning that applies to being a sprinter. And it's gonna take a while for your body to adjust and readjust to that. Sprinters have to do a lot of weight training. Most long distance runners don't have a lot of lean mass on them. They actually train their body to eat into their lean mass as fuel. That's why you can look at lots of these long distance runners and if you put a t-shirt on them, they don't even look like they're an athlete but you take a sprinter and those guys are jacked. And the same thing works with diet. If you've been conditioning your body with this main source of fuel for a long time, and now you're changing it, you're just gonna have to accept the fact that sometimes your body may not adjust so fast. And not only are you doing a good step by cutting out carbs, after a while you may have to, or maybe in the beginning, you may have to figure out your sweet spot for protein. I think the most important thing to remember is you always have to find your upper limits of protein and what your body can handle really well. If you're trying to do that and you want to biohack your body, you have to start at a lower protein source and then start pushing it slowly to find out your upper protein source. If you start at your upper protein source, you might just be giving yourself a lot of headache. Once again, that's if you're not metabolically sound. If you're in great shape, it's gonna be easy to start working with your protein source to begin with and trying to always push the ceiling of that protein source. Give serious consideration to what you do for your protein source, not just the quality of protein you're getting, but how much you're getting. And if you think you need to tweak it a little bit more, maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more, maybe you need more activity in your lifestyle. Do what works best for you. Don't always push for your lower limits of protein. That's a temporary measure. In the long run, you always wanna find your upper limits. Anyway, thanks a lot. I hope you appreciate this video. Give it a thumbs up if you can. Take care.